brothers and sisters god bless hope another day is going good everything's going well with you one of the things that i like to talk about every now and then is the peace that we have towards god i like to look at how the scripture defines it how that we collectively and equally can share it and it's not necessarily a feeling it's not always a feeling it's just a fact the peace with god that we have with him is a eternal fact it's something that we may not always emotionally feel once we understand it to be the truth, we can change our feelings around the fact. Like one of the facts about the peace that we have towards God is it's eternal. It's forever. Jesus said, my peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So according to scripture, the peace that we have towards God is an eternal fact. It's not a temporal one. It's not as the world gives does he give to us. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid, he says. Letting your heart be in trouble or letting it be in fear stands in direct contradiction to you having the ability to have peace. That's why Jesus is telling you not to be afraid. Let not your heart be troubled because he gives you an eternal peace. My peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you, not as the world gives do I give to you. The, the world gives temporal things. They only last for a little while. What Jesus gives to us is eternal. My peace I give to you. The gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. And the peace that Jesus gives to us is not as the world gives does he give to us. So we don't have to let our hearts be troubled. We don't have to let them be afraid. The peace that he gives us is an eternal fact. Now this peace that we have towards God, according to scripture, is in direct relation to our not guilty status before him. As the scripture says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ. So, therefore, having been justified, so this is past tense language, we've already been justified in the past tense. It was through faith in Jesus Christ, and it's through the knowledge of this not guilty verdict that we have peace toward God. Therefore, having been justified by faith, not guilty verdict, we have peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a peace not as the world gives does he give to us. So we don't have to let our hearts be troubled, nor let them be afraid. We have a not guilty status before God by our faith, and it was completely independent from law performance. We maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. So our not guilty status being justified was independent from law performance, independent from anything that we do in accordance to loving God with all our heart, mind, and soul, loving our neighbor as ourself, because all the law and the prophets are connected to that. As Jesus said, the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as you love yourself, and all the law and the prophets hang on those two commandments. So what the scripture says is we have a non-guilty verdict independent to our performance to loving God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and the entirety of the law. We place our faith in the one who was completely obedient to the entirety of the law. And by our faith in Jesus Christ, we receive a not guilty verdict. We maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Through Jesus Christ's obedience to the law, we also receive his righteousness. Just as through one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. Even so, through the one man's obedience, the many are made righteous. So by our faith in Jesus Christ, we receive not only a justified not guilty verdict but we also receive his righteousness and you can see that it's not through our obedience it's through his obedience just as through one man's obedience the many are made righteous so through the one man referencing jesus christ the many are made righteous according to romans chapter 3 verse 22 even the righteousness of god which is by faith in christ jesus upon all and unto all who believe and there is no difference so in the eyes of God, there's no difference between us. We have even the righteousness of God. He has given us his righteousness, and that's bestowed upon all of us who have faith in Christ, along with the not guilty verdict. Therefore, having been justified by faith, 
we have peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's something that we all collectively and equally have access to. It's not only the not guilty verdict that we have, but also the peace that we have towards God. It's important to remember that this isn't always a feeling, it's, it's a fact. It's not always an emotion, it's not always something that we can feel, but it is always an eternal fact. The more that we understand that, that can change our feelings, and our feelings can be at more at peace with the knowledge of what God has done. But it's important to remember that just because you don't feel it, feel it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, and it doesn't mean that it isn't your possession. Because the peace that we have towards God doesn't exist when we start feeling it. It exists already due to the blood of Jesus Christ and his finished work, and then our minds comport to the reality of what Jesus Christ has done. And then according to scripture, it's up to us to conceptualize this living peace that God has given us. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts by which you were called to peace into one body and be thankful. Colossians chapter 3. So it says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. It's saying, let it have command and authority. Let it have, be the dominant factor in your heart. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts by which you were called to peace. So we were equally and collectively called to peace into one body. If you have faith in Christ, you have that justified, not guilty verdict, and you are collectively and equally called to the same peace that any other believer has been called to. And you've been called to let that peace be the dominant ruling power in your heart. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts by which you were called to peace. Sometimes the problem is that people just need to know from the scriptures what it is that Jesus fully accomplished by which we can have peace. If we harmonize and rightly divide a few scriptures together, we can see from Isaiah 53, it says, But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. So this scripture is speaking in direct relation to for our sin. But he was wounded for our transgression, he was crushed for our iniquities. It goes on to say, But the punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. So we can see that the scripture is referencing that we have peace, again, that we have peace with God through the knowledge that we have been healed in direct relation to our sin, our transgressions and our iniquities. To more know definitively what it means to be healed from those transgressions, from those iniquities by the cross, what it means to be healed in the sight of God, we go to Colossians chapter 1, verse 22, and it says he reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ's body by his death, that we might be holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. So you can see the punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed, that we are holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation, and through the knowledge of this that we have peace with God. See, when the scripture says, therefore having been justified by faith, we have peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ, to be justified means you're guiltless, that there's no accusation against you. And it says, by his stripes we are healed, that he reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ's body by his death, that we might be holy in his sight, without blemish, and free from accusation. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and this is the peace that Jesus spoke of about when he said, My peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you, not as the world gives do I give to you, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So if we keep rightly dividing things and want to know what this healing entails, how long does it last according to Scripture? Hebrews chapter 10 verse 14 says, By one offering he has perfected forever those who are sanctified. By one single offering he has perfected us forever in the sight of God, having made us holy without blemish and free from accusation. It's through the knowledge of this that we have peace toward God. Not as the world gives does he give to us. See, this peace that he gives to us, not as the world gives does he give to us, is based on the perfect work of the cross that's forever. By one offering he has perfected forever those who are sanctified. That is one of the reasons why Jesus could say, My peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Because it was going to be based on a perfect, once and for all, all-sufficient, all-time sacrifice. That there's nothing that we can add to to make it any better. By one offering, he has perfected forever those who are sanctified. 
so you can see from the scripture the peace that we have towards God through the blood of Jesus Christ and what it represents, the washing away of all our sins, having made us holy in his sight without blemish, free from accusation, justified, not guilty and righteous, and placed in a perfect relationship with God. If you consider the scripture, it says, having reconciled all things to himself, whether things on heaven or things on earth, having made peace through the blood of the cross. So over and over the scripture says he reconciled, that God is the one that reconciled. He's the one that put us back in a good relationship with him. Once again, you see the scripture saying, having made peace through the blood of the cross. The blood of the cross is the representation of what washes away our sin. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin, the scripture says. So the peace that we have towards God is through the knowledge of what the blood has accomplished, having washed away all our sins. As far as the east is to the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. He's made us justified, holy in his sight, without blemish, and free from accusation. And it's through the knowledge of this that we have peace toward God. The punishment that was upon him brought us peace. And by his stripes we are healed. The other thing that I've come to understand about this peace that we have towards God is you can be literally living anywhere in any kind of condition and still have access and are qualified for this peace. It doesn't matter if you're living in Beverly Hills, California, if you're living in a ghetto in Venezuela, it doesn't matter if you're in a wheelchair, it doesn't matter if you're in a prison, it doesn't matter if you're in good health or bad health. There's no worldly condition that can disqualify you from having access to this peace. Because this peace is blood dependent, it's not dependent on anything in this world, it's dependent upon the accomplishments of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, in me you'll have peace, in the world you'll have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. So Jesus says, in me you'll have peace, in the world you will have trouble, in this world you'll have trouble. This is why unbelievers who don't build their foundation of their life on Jesus Christ, they don't build their house of their life on the foundation of Jesus Christ. When the storms come, great is its fall because they try to anchor their peace in things of this world, and things of this world are temporal. And Jesus gives us a peace not as the world gives, does he give to us. It's not anchored into things of this world. It's anchored in his accomplishments, the not guilty verdict that we have through faith in him, being holy in his sight without blemish, free from accusation. And there's no worldly troubling circumstance that can interrupt or stop or disqualify you from this peace. In me you'll have peace, in the world you'll have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. He's letting us know that we will have temporal troubling circumstances in this world. They're temporal. The peace that we have with him is eternal. The troubling circumstances are temporal. Now, there's a couple of things that will try to conceptually steal this peace from you. One will be your own condemning conscience. Brothers and sisters, if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Sometimes our own conscience or our own heart can try to condemn us and take away the peace that we have towards God. That's why the scripture says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Guard your heart with all diligence. And that's why the scripture says one way to guard your heart is let the peace of God rule in your hearts by which you were called to peace into one body and be thankful. One of the best ways to guard your heart is to let the peace of God have command and authority in your heart over what the blood of Christ has accomplished. And that we can be thankful that he gives us a peace not as the world gives does he give to us. He's made us holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. And giving us a non-guilty verdict. The other thing that will try to steal your peace is the religious world. A lot of people standing under the banner of Christianity who will act as though if you don't meet up to a certain measure of performance, then you don't have right to peace with God. When somebody acts like you're too much of a sinner to call yourself a Christian and to have peace with God, what they're saying by implication is that they merit peace with God, that they merit the blood and they merit peace with God through their own supposed good actions or own, their own self-perceived righteousness, they believe that they're meriting the right to have peace with God through his blood. And that's actually a sin of human self-righteousness and pride that they are then engaged in. So the self-righteous 
religious world will try to make you believe that you do not deserve to have peace with God and what qualifies you to have peace with God is your good works. But the only thing that qualifies us to have peace with God is our sin. That's what the blood of Christ is for. And no one deserves the blood of Christ and the peace that comes through it. It's something that is given to us by the grace of God. And the only qualification that you need for the blood and to have peace with it is to recognize you're a sinner and Jesus Christ is the remedy. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. So being one that the religious world is an enemy that will often try to steal your peace and sometimes yourself, it's best not to keep your mind on yourself at all. It's best to keep your mind on Jesus Christ and his accomplishments. In the scripture it says, He will keep you at perfect peace whose mind has stayed on him because you trust in him. You can see that when you keep your mind on Christ, when you keep your mind on Christ and what he accomplished, that he's made us holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation, that he's given us a not guilty verdict. He will keep you at perfect peace whose mind has stayed on him because you trust in him. This trusting is in direct relation to us having faith and believing in Jesus Christ. Like Romans chapter 4 verse 5, some translation says, To the one who does not work but trust him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accredited to righteousness. The one who works not but trusts him, that's Jesus, who justifies the ungodly, that's a non-guilty verdict. His faith is accredited to righteousness. So he'll keep you at perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because you trust in him or trust in him for the not guilty verdict and for our righteousness. We're trusting in him as our savior through the accomplishments of his blood that he's made us holy in his sight without blemish, free from accusation, justified forever. So another way to access this peace as far as feeling it emotionally and feeling it in our feelings is just keeping your mind on Christ and not on yourself, not on not on self, but on Christ. So I hope this blesses someone and he will keep you at perfect peace whose mind has stayed on him because you trust in him. That's the promise of the scripture. That if you reckon yourself dead and crucified with Christ and it's no longer you who live, but Christ who lives in you and the life you now live in the flesh, you live by faith in the Son of God who loved you and gave himself up for you. That you live by faith in the one who loved us, gave himself up for us, who made his holiness sight without blemish, free from accusation, through the knowledge of that we have peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ. So God bless you, peace to you, take care, and I hope your night or day is going good. Take care. Then I got me a